This faith doesn't come from just us. It comes from Jesus who started it in you and even who perfects it. So can it start out improper and weak? Yes. He is the author of faith. What is it that we receive that we don't get from him? You cannot get this without hearing and hearing him, the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, who is the word. So when you get all these things happening to you, it all came by faith. You didn't see anything that Jesus is on the cross here. All these are, came even in movies later. Some of you even have never seen the Jesus film. But by faith, you believe that there's a man who died on the cross for you. There is redemption for our sins. There is a redemption from that curse that we had since. Hello everyone, um, thank you so much for tuning in to the Knowing Him series. We started last week on faith and this is part two. And if you haven't heard it, please go back and hear it because you will understand the second part. Without further ado, let's continue in our message in the second part of faith. God bless you as you listen. Eh? But they were bringing lambs. They were bringing the same thing that Ebo brought. What is it that was different between Ebo and all these things that God says, I'm so tired of the burnt offerings you're bringing me all the time. It was not coming out of faith. It was just coming out of works. Let me just do it. At what God has said. Eh? So if you're bringing your offering, make sure it comes. If you're bringing your, what was this? Your acceptable sacrifice. May it come out based on faith. Based on like, yes, I'm believing and coming. So, so be, be it even our bringing these days. It shouldn't be coerced, no. It should be backed by faith. By faith in like, I know the Lord I'm going into. No wonder Paul continues. There's a way he says, God loves a cheerful giver. Don't come to bring like somebody who has been, you know, like us, you bring. No, that's not the way we give anymore these days. We give prompted by faith. Amen. We give prompted by that assurance. Now I'm reading verse 1. The confirmation of the things hopeful being. We do not see the conviction of reality of the real fact that is we come out of the love for God when we're bringing our offerings. Not coerced. I don't like it when, 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 when there's coercion in giving. Because your, your whatever, your sacrifice won't be accepted. May it come from your heart, what you've decided to give. May you bring it and may it be acceptable to God, backed by faith. I do not mind even if it's a, th I don't mind if even if it's a, a thousand sheep. Remember when Jesus was seated near the temple and all these rich men were giving in? And then this woman with just two coins, I bet she was backed by faith because that's all she had. That's all she had. She gave out of her poverty. No, they are not even coins. There are, some, they, there are places where they say there were two, I think they were called buttons. Literally, the, the best. But out of faith, she's like, let me give to my God. And all these who brought all these big, big sacrifices because they just wanted to do, be seen. So whatever you do, are you doing it for works to be seen? Or are you doing it out of faith? Giving to God who, who sees in the secret. No wonder he says in Matthew, is it Matthew chapter 6, that when you give, May this hand not what? Not, not, not see what this other hand is giving. That he who sees in secret will reward your giving. How many a times do we come to bring that people may see? It's out of works, not faith. But you give when you're giving. Give to the God who sees in secret. Amen. Backed by faith. Hallelujah. That faith which is authored by Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So in our giving, I don't know why they started with, with Ebo, but that's why we've started. Even in our giving, it, like he says, by faith, Ebo brought God a better offering than Cain did. That by faith, he was commended as righteous. He hadn't even done anything, let me say that, to say that he was this. There's no way, but he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Ebo still speaks even though he is dead. By now, by faith, Ebo still, we are talking about him now. We are talking about him now. We should be people who live a track. Hmm? That your children's children's children will talk about you. That my mother, my father, my grandmother was a person of faith. They believed God. By faith, your blood should speak even up to now, even if you die. 
I'm not going to be a person who goes into oblivion. I'm going to be one who's talked about. I believed God to the end. Because we're going to see even in dying, there's supposed to be faith. <laughs> Amen. Verse 5, it says, By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. He didn't say that it is, it is, it is, it, you can't try to please God. He says it is impossible to please God without faith. That's why he says, my just shall live by faith. If you want to live a life that is always pleasing to God, live by faith. Not by things you see, not by your works, but by faith in him. He says, if I could read that, he says, because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven so that he did not even have a glimpse of death. For he was found and he was not found because God had translated him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received testimony still on record that he had pleased and been satisfactory to God. Can God put a record on you that you believe him 24-7? Even in that little one, I have, why, why actually I started with, with chapter 12, verse 1? Because there is this thing like, oh my God, I don't have faith. Start with that little, he's the author. He's the beginner. He says even if you have as little as a mustard seed, you bring it, use it. You can tell this mountain to move as little as a mustard seed. He doesn't want your faith to be as big as what? As an empire building, state building. No. He wants it as little. The mustard seed, they say, is so little. But that one can grow up to be something big. But start using it. Don't fall off. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Practice your faith. Actually, I'm preaching to you, and this is something else I'm preaching to myself. How many a times I, I, I have, I, the word has come and I need to add faith to it, but I run. Yeah? I run in my own way, in my own thinking, in my own doing things. I do things the way I think I should have done them. Not how God is, is, is looking at me to believe him on faith. But they tell you here, Enoch who walked his whole life pleasing to God. The Bible is silent of how he walked. Yes, there are, there's a book of Enoch, but you know, the, 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 it's not part of the, 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 uh, the, you know, the, 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 the holy books now. Uh, but I, I know, by the time they talk about him, he's a man of faith. And by the time he was translated into heaven, he never saw death. <laughs> this man walked with God. This man walked with God. We continue. Um, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please and be successful. Yeah. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and, and that he is a rewarder of those who honestly and diligently seek him out. We cannot, it is impossible to please God, not in your singing, not in your giving, not in your what, but if you do not have faith in him, when you go back, to, I, I, even one of the homework I'm going to give you, go back to Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4 where I read. Hmm? They say they had the gospel, but they did not apply faith to it. It's like you doubt, they doubted him. Hmm? If you could go back, especially chapter 4, it says, so have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did but the message they had was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed now we have now we who have believed enter that rest just as god says so i declared in my oath they shall never enter the, my rest and yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world therefore since it remains for some to enter that rest and since those who are formerly had the gospel proclaimed today did not go in because of their disobedience because of their unbelief you could even come out of egypt how many came out of egypt the the, the, the bible history say 1 million how many made it to the promised land only two <laughs> Joshua and Caleb in his generation. Only two Joshua and Caleb. So here he's saying, they did not what? They did not apply, they, 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 because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. 
It is another thing to hear the gospel. It is another thing to tell me that this is a promise for you. But if you do not add faith to it, you will never enter that rest God is telling us. You never enter that promised land. As much as you hear the promises of God, as much as you hear the gospel preached to you, you need to mix it with faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more you hear, the more you get to accept it, as little as it is. May it start working in your life. Hallelujah. We go back to, to, to our portion. So, um, prompted by faith, Noah, being forewarned by God concerning events of which, of which as yet there was no visible sign, took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark for the deliverance of his family. By this, his faith which relied on God, he passed judgment and sentence on the world's unbelief and became an heir and possessor of righteousness, that relation being... You see how these people of the old got that, you got, got that righteousness of faith that comes out of faith. The Bible here is not talking them that they, even Jesus then was even crucified. For, no, but because they believed God. They got that garment. They became the possessor of righteousness. It talks about Abel. He became the possessor of righteousness. It talks about Enoch. He became the possessor of righteousness. All because of what? Because of their faith in God. Now, how about us who are now, who even have Jesus himself, who was just the promise of these people who just heard about him? Prompted by faith. Noah are being forewarned by God concerning events of which as yet there were no visible sign. Took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared the ark. How many things have you heard and you have not applied? But they're in the Bible there. Or even these end times to come, but you're like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, scoffers. How long have they talked about the end times to come? And you, you know, but Noah, but with Noah, there was a kind of end of times that was coming because the whole world was destroyed, by the way. I can imagine you preparing yourself for the end times. you preparing, you looking up towards heaven. Eh? And, and people are like, wow, he's, you know, there's that thing fighting with you. They have talked about the end times since when? When is it coming? But the things are showing we are coming to the end of the ages. We're going to see this in the Bible as we continue to read. Hallelujah. And then we say, and we, go, <laughs> and we continue, amen. Uh, verse 8, it says, And urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed, and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. Now I want to put a pause, a pause here. Like I said, our faith grows. Because when you see this person who writes this book of, of Hebrews 11, he, he, he's like constructing, he's like constricting everything into one. But when you see, they talk about, by faith Abraham, when called, called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. But even Abraham he wasn't perfect in his faith because when you read in Acts chapter, he, he, it was growing in Acts chapter, um, Acts chapter 6. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 6. Um, Acts chapter 7. When you, re when you read there, it says that, um, verse 1, then the high priest taught, asked Stephen, are these charges true? To this he replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and, and your people, God said, and go to the land I'll show you. So he left the land of Chaldeans and settled in Haran after the death of his father. God sent him to this land where you are now living. Haran wasn't the final place of destiny. So you see even Abraham had to grow in his faith to go to the last place. So with you, if you're like, oh my God, I'm not yet perfected. He will perfect it. Because he says eventually, leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land. I will show you. Though he had told him before, he had told him before that leave the people in Mesopotamia. So why did Abraham first go to Haran? Was there, is that where God had told him to go? No, he was supposed to go to Canaan, but he first made a pit stop in Haran. So if you're there and you've made a pit stop somewhere in your life, do not take, do not, do not lose hope. 
But who is called the champion of faith? Abraham. But at one time they told him, you know, go to the land, I'll show you. Not Haran. It was Canaan. At one time they told him, through your seed, will I bless all the nations? Do you know what he did? He made a pit stop with Hagar and got Ishmael. Does that make him not a person of faith? No. He was growing. He was being perfected. Amen. So when they called him the father of faith, he still believed even when things were hard. At one time, yes, he tried to do things in his own. But he later, he believed God and he got the promise. So for some, for some of us, if, if, if you come to a stage where you're like, oh my God, I'm not yet there. I want you to be encouraged. Hallelujah. That even even our, our forefathers, at one time they would make pit stops. I'll call them pit stops. But that was not their destiny. Hmm? Because I would have said that God would have said, oh no, Abraham, I told you, I'll give you a son by your own flesh through Sarah. He told it to him. But why would he believe Sarah to bring him Hagar? And then they get Ishmael. Only for even, but by the way, some of these things even bring, they tell you even now that Ishmael might now fight with the Jews. So sometimes some of these things, when we try to do things in our works and in our, in our way we do things, it can have repercussions. Amen. But he eventually believed God. And when he told him this time, around this time, I'll, I'll come and visit you. And Sarah and Sarah laughed as much as they were champions of faith. <laughs> Let's continue in that scripture. By faith, that is Hebrews 11 verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to the place, he would let her receive as inheritance. He obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. I can imagine God telling you, <laughs> get up, Joshua, now. <laughs> go to Mesopotamia. <laughs> <laughs> how, God, how? Show me, how do we start? I mean, go up, go and start this ministry. How many times we, we ask God so many things? But the Bible here is saying he did, even though he didn't know where he was going, he believed and obeyed. He believed and obeyed. And he, though he did not know where he was going. And that's, I think, the work we have with God we do not know how things are, but we know who holds the future. I may not know the future. There's that song. I may not know the future, but I know who holds the future. Amen. So by faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. Now there's this word that is coming on board now of the same promise. Another thing that prompts faith is a promise. That they made their homes in this foreign country in tents. I mean, God told him, I'm going to give you this land. But it was a future promise. How many of us have promises? How many promises are there for us in the Bible? But they can never be enacted unless by... Let's continue before I answer myself. For he was looking... Forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. For he was awaiting, he was waiting, expectantly and confident, looking forward to a city which has fixed and firm foundations whose architect and builder is God. There is, there is such deep, profound, what should I say, words in this. These people were prompted by a promise. They heard God and they believed him. But they didn't even possess that place by then because you get to see that after Abraham and Isaac at, and Jacob, they go into Egypt as what? As slaves, the descendants of Abraham. Later on, after 400, 430 years, do they come back and they take this land? But they only walked on promises. And the only thing that made them walk this walk of faith was that promise. What promise do you have in your life, if I may ask? What has God said about you? What has God said about your family? What has God said about your children? The other time I was talking about how we have exceedingly abundant promises. What prophecy has God said about your life? Reminds me of a pastor friend whose wife got sick of cancer. And I remember him saying, my wife is not going to die. And I was like, why? Because... God prophesied, he told us this about her life. There's something she's supposed to do. So she's not going to die by faith. They raise their faith and as I speak, she's cancer free. She's in remission. But what do you have as a promise that can take you forward? 
That's why we need to read the Bible. That's why we say it's faith comes by believing and believe by hearing and hearing the word of God. What, 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 what is there that drives you to have this faith in God? What is the word saying about the promise for your children? A promise for your marriage? A promise for your ministry? Has he said anything? These people walked because they had a promise backing their faith. Hallelujah. I bring in that word. Do you have a promise in your life? Do you have that word that you've ever read and you're like, this is mine? He said, I will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Eh? My children will be holy by faith, even if your children are go away from you. I, I usually tell people, um, and I, 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 I get into trouble with this, and I'm like, I do not mind dying regardless of my children being orphans. It used to be my fear to die now that my children don't even have a father. How many people have that fear? Ah, if I die, where will I leave my children, especially mothers? Oh, if I die. But truth be told, is it you who protects your children? By faith, there is a promise about your children. That those children are holy. It's not you protecting them. It's God. Hallelujah. So even if I die, I know God will look after my children. And I always tell them, that you guys, if I die, never leave the Lord. I remember there was a time I used to tell them, and they're like, but mommy, why are you saying these things? I want to bring them up to know that even if I'm not around, they have God, Jehovah. They are the Jehovah Jireh, their provider, their Rafa, Jehovah, Jehovah Rafa, their, their healer, Jehovah. Not me. They shouldn't look up to me. That's why it says in, in Hebrews 12, fix your eyes on Jesus, not on a human. Not on the things around you. Fix your eyes on Jesus as you run your race. As he's taking you, as he's holding your hand, fix your eyes on him. Not on the circumstances around you. Hallelujah. I know mothers, I, 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 I can relate. I know you can relate with me. If I die, how you fear death. I mean, how many people have grown up and they have orphans and they have gone to be very good. I mean, they have, they have turned out well. I mean, oh, he am a kagang, my marriage. By faith, he said. Eh? Has, you, you, the, 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 it's actually here in Hebrews 13. Eh? That God honors uh, the, the, the marriages. Give it to God. May your marriage walk on faith. What promise is there? Prompted by faith. So I also want to encourage you. Get some of these things that are yours and they can never be taken away. You know and you know and you know shall live and shall live. I, I, I like where I was at. Shall live and shall live, shall live by faith. Not by what you see. Not by the circumstances around us. But by faith. Hmm? So he says here, they, they lived as strangers in a strange country, living in tents. And you would have said by these people, how can you live in tents when Mesopotamia was built? How can you live in a tent? How can you live in such a place? In such a, in such, how can you live in such a way when you can go to Mesopotamia where there are buildings? Some people look at you and they're like, but you, what is your life about? Eh? God called you out. <laughs> reminds me when I sometimes, um, you know, it, it comes, humanity, when you compare yourselves to some of your colleagues and friends and where they have and things they have achieved. <laughs> and it looks like you're living in a tent. <laughs> and there they are still in the Mesopotamia that is built. But because you're prompted by a, you're prompted by a promise, you're prompted by faith to go on on that journey, when you could even have gone back. Let's continue. Verse 10. For he was awaiting expectantly and confidently, looking forward to a city which was fixed and, and, and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Look at what Abraham was looking at. Let me ask, what do you see? Do you see the things here on earth that they may dismay you? Oh, I wish I had this. Oh, I had better housing. Oh, I had better what? But look at what Abraham was seeing. For he was waiting for he was looking forward to the city whose foundations and whose architect and builder is God. So he didn't mind living in tents. He didn't mind living in tents. 
He didn't mind the situation he was in. He didn't mind what was not going right. He didn't mind the good life he had left in Mesopotamia that now he should be subjected to the life of living in tents. Because for some of you who, are, who know history, Mesopotamia was a built, was a built civilization. But how can you come from such a place that is built? You come to an alien land where you don't even know. You don't know its people. You don't know what's going to happen. That's what they call living the life of faith. How many of us God has called us from the comforts of all the things Egypt could give you to places where you don't know? You don't know what is going to even happen tomorrow, but by faith you are there. Because you're looking forward to a city that is not built by such people, but is built by God. I like what goes on here. Verse 13 says, all these people who are still living by faith, when they died, they did not receive these things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are not looking for a country of their own. Oh, what do you, do, 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 are you still attached to the world here? Let me continue. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had an opportunity to return. Instead, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Remember when, when Jesus says that when Abraham saw me, he rejoiced? I think that was in John. I, John, I think chapter, chapter, would it be eight? That when Abraham saw me, he rejoiced. And people were like, Shia, were you here before Abraham? And he has said before Abraham was. So they say, they saw these promises. They, you, we, you know, we are so attached to the world that sometimes we, we remove our eyes off the Lord. But you see, like I even read in Colossians chapter 3, he says, we are seated with him in the high places. So fix your eyes on Jesus who seated. Let me read that again. Oh, I'm, I don't know. My, my, my tongue sometimes gets tied when I'm trying to explain. He says, these people all died, controlled and sustained by faith, but not having received that tangible fulfillment of God's promises. Only having seen it and greeted it from a great distance by faith, and all the while acknowledging and confessing that there were strangers and temporary residents and exiles upon the earth. They admitted they were strangers, so I don't mind even if I live on tents. They saw something greater than just them living in tents. They saw something greater than just going through that situation here. Can you see something more than this, regardless of what the situation is here? Or oh, our eyes fixed on the temporary things. Now, every time we talk about faith, you're saying faith to build a house, faith to get a bigger car, faith to get a better marriage, faith. Our eyes are fixed on the things here, but we are just, we are exiles here. Don't fix your eyes. I am talking to you as I'm talking to myself too. How many times I fix my eyes and I want to get things here on earth. But God is saying, yes, such people fix their eyes on a heavenly city. On a heavenly, whatever goal, not here on earth. Because what you can imagine, if Abraham, God told him, I'm making you a great generation, I'm going to make you your, your descendants as, 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 as numerous as the sand of the sea. Did he see them? No. But he saw them by faith, and through your seed, the whole nations will be blessed. Seed, not seeds. He was talking about Jesus who would come through Abraham, the lineage of Abraham, through your seed that all the nations will be blessed. Hallelujah. But how we fix our eyes on the things here. And I like what God says in verse, I think verse 14. Now those people who talk as they did show plainly that they're in search of a fatherland, their own country. How many times do we hear the gospel and it's all about the tangible and the things here? Hmm? I remember there was... <laughs> To me, death has become normal because when my husband died, I thought it was so far-fetched, but it became near to me. And there was a time I would tell my people, guys, when I die, when I die this and this, oh, when I die this and this, uh, oh, I, I can't wait. There's a lady I, I, I listen to, she's called Sarah Groves. She has a song saying, going home. And in one of her lyrics, she writes that, um, you're not too young to think about these things. You're not too young to perceive of that going on. Even Paul says, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. These people have a different way of seeing things. As we are always seeing how we can, 
We live on here, live on here. But these people who say such things, they are looking forward for a city in glory. They are looking forward for a city not built by human hands. They are looking forward for a building. They see other things. What do you see in faith as a child of God? Hello viewers, thank you so much for uh, listening to Knowing Him, this Knowing Him series on faith. Let's go for a quick break and don't go anywhere. God bless. SCE is the best curriculum every parent would give his child. I like the curriculum of SCE. It teaches us more about the Bible and it helps us to know more about the world. This type of curriculum is self-motivated. Learners motivate themselves by setting goals that they can achieve. He plans his day and is sure he will achieve the set goals. We are here to go beyond the call of duty in inspiring achievements and getting the best out of each child that walks through our gates. The Royal Christian School, raising a generation disciple for greatness. Hello everyone, this is Dorothy again, coming to you with a sermon on faith, and we're sharing together. Please let's continue with this sermon, and God continually bless you. Thank you so much for not touching that dial. Yes, you're in Uganda, but you're not Ugandan. You're a child of God. Let me, let me just be candid. How so much we attach ourselves to our nations. Yes, we should pray for the nations. As much as there's a, there's a mandate for us to pray for the nations, a mandate for us to, to whatever, to bring the nations to Christ, and this we should do it. But don't attach, we shouldn't attach ourselves. And, and this is also hard for me. How I want to have that beautiful house on this, on this planet. How I want to have this beautiful car on this planet. How I want to have this beautiful life on this planet. But there's a way we attach our lives to here, and we forget we are just sojourners. We are just exiles. We are just What's that the word they use here? We are strangers. You're a stranger in Uganda. You're a Ugandan, yes. I'm talking to my fellow Ugandans. But if you're born again, according to this scripture here, you're supposed to be a stranger to this country, Uganda. You're supposed to pray for it, but don't attach to it. Are you wherever you are? Are you in Malaysia? Are you in China? Wherever you may listen to this word, are you in Africa, in any country? Yes, you are nationality there, but you're supposed to be a stranger. You're just passing through, do your due work, and then in your due time, you're going home. Work for home. Run like you're running to go home. But we run like we want to, we, we want to be comfortable here. Do I make sense? There's a way we want to settle in here. And like I said, as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. Can we speak like these people that people who say such things that they were, they went, they, that, uh, that they welcome them from admitting that they are foreigners. Can you say, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere. You know, some of these things become abstract because they are so far-fetched. They are up there. <laughs> and my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. So they become abstract to us. But that man sang, this world is not my home. And as much as we want to put our, we want to ground ourselves here, we want to put our food and our, it is not our home. We have a better home. So some of these things didn't happen to these people and they didn't mind because it says they, 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 they saw these promises from a distance and they welcomed them from a distance and they received, they did not receive some of these things. To them, Jesus, Jesus was the ultimate promise. The Holy Spirit was the ultimate promise. Hmm? The promise we, where we read in Galatians 3. But they saw them. You know where the Bible says that, that the prophets eagerly looked into the things to see when this promise will come to pass. I think that is in Peter. They would look into scripture to discern when this promise brought by God will come to pass. Every time we actually we hear about Abraham's promise, we think about promises of riches. <laughs> I don't know why. Our minds always go to riches, go to riches. But what kind of person are you? Can you call yourself a stranger here? 
that even when death knocks at your door, like they, they, we're going to even see here, they died by faith. They died in faith. They lived by faith. Hallelujah. So the people who say such things show that they are looking for a country not their own. If they are, look, if they are thinking of the country they had left, they would have had an opportunity to return. That's where some of our brothers and sisters, when, when, you know, when, when they think that things are supposed to be culminated here, they, they, they always get an opportunity to return. But these people knew that, no, we are not looking for Canaan. I'm not looking up to Canaan. But I'm looking to a city built by God. I'm looking to a city built not by human hands. Because if it was that, and you live in tents, and you're like, but Mesopotamia had better buildings. I mean, there are things better in Egypt for me. Why take me through this desert? Why take me through this hard, hard journey? More of faith. More journey of promise. Why will this promise come to be? And then you fall short because you are fixing your eyes on this world. But there's a better promise of a better city. Fix your eyes on a city that is not built by human hands. Hallelujah. Instead, verse 16 said, instead they are looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Look, listen to that, verse 16. In, but, but the truth is that they were yearning for, aspiring to a better and more desirable country that is heavenly. For that reason, God is not ashamed to be called their God, even to be surnamed their God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for he has prepared a city for them. They were looking, but <laughs> they were yearning. What do you yearn for? Do you, run, do you yearn to run for that race? And you speak like Paul, for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. Can you say that? Like, oh, can't wait for me to die and meet my Jesus face to face. This lady, Sarah Groves, she sings that song, Going Home. If you can, you can look it up. But she says, I can't wait to see you face to face. When can I get to see you face to face? Can you have that kind of mentality in you? When will I get to see that city that he said, I'm going to prepare for you, that mansion? When will I get there? Oh, we are waiting for, we, we are looking forward so much for the mansions here. And even after you get it, you're like, children walk out, you stay in there with your spouse, or you even alone. We look at tangible, perishing things that are here that are going to perish. Hallelujah. Let's fix our eyes like he was saying here in Romans, in, 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 in Hebrews 12. Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus who is the leader and source of our faith. Look away from all these things. Yes, I know you want to build a house. Even I want to build a house. Sometimes it becomes so, uh, I become so obsessed with it. <laughs> I want to build a house. I want to build a house. And I'm like, so if I build it, will I become any better or any different? There's a way, these things of this world, how I'll get a different, how I'll get a better can. There's a way, how I'll get a better job, or how I'll get better clothing, or how better, you know. And we are possessed into those things. But I want us to fix our, our, our whatever. Can we look into a heavenly things? Because God is not ashamed to be called the God of such people who are looking forward to him and what he has prepared for us. Hallelujah. I hope I brought that home. But when we go to verse 11, we go back to verse 11. For um, because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child. These people, even conceiving of a child, took faith. <laughs> Many some of us, when we see people, you just get pregnant. You think everything is, you know, by it, it happened, it happened. But as children of God, you see here, even conceiving of a child took faith. Because of faith, Sarah herself received physical power, even when she was long past age for it, because she considered God who had given the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. Wasn't this somebody, wasn't this the same person who laughed when they told her that she can give birth? <laughs> at 90, she was like, can I really have the joy of, of really nursing a child? When they told her that at this time, we'll visit Sarah and she'll have a child. And she laughed. And she laughed. But she, they say, by faith, she was enabled. Is there anything you want to conceive? By faith, may you be enabled in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, to conceive that 
which will bring glory to God. Hallelujah. By faith, she was enabled. So from one man, though he was physically good as dead, there, there have sprung descendants whose number is as the stars of the heaven and as countless as the innumerable sands on the seashore. This was just a promise. He just saw it. He just believed it. That God told him, you have descendants as, 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 as countless as the stars of the heaven and is innumerable as the stars, stars on the seashore. But he believed it. Though he didn't have a child. By faith, amen. Those people all died and controlled and sustained their faith, but not having received the tangible fulfillment of God's promises, only having seen it and greeted it from a great distance by faith, and all the while acknowledging and confessing that there were strangers and temporary residents and exiles upon the earth. I know some people say, but we are going into tumultuous times. Would you persist in faith? Would you go on in faith? Hmm? These people, even some of these promises never came to pass. Some people are going to say, God promised, we'll live in houses we did not build. We'll, you know, there are those promises we pick out eh? in Exodus, in Leviticus. We'll, 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 we'll take vineyards we did not plant. Yeah, by yeah, the house is not coming. <laughs> you wait for the house you did not build, for the vineyards you did not plant, for the, you know. And he's saying, some of these things, even they looked forward to them, but they did not get them, but they still lived by faith when they died. Thank you so much for hearing, and I want us to pray about exactly that we have had. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Jesus Christ, the author, the perfecter, the starter, the initiator, the, 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 the finisher of our faith where sometimes we even sometimes we are so proud thinking that we can <laughs> we have the faith to do things we forget to fix our eyes on him who is the author who is the origin of faith what do we get that we didn't receive from you our lives our salvation our garments of righteousness nothing came from us nothing came from anything we did good everything comes from you the father of lights who doesn't change like shifting shadows what is that we got even the little faith we have, it comes from you. Why should we look off to other things? Why should we look off to ourselves thinking that we have so much faith, we can do this, when it is you who can perfect us? We ask in the name of Jesus, in the coming times, when things become grim, when things become despondent, that we can fix our eyes on you. You, the author and perfecter of our faith. You who showed us how you walked, that even when you were despised by people, you scorned the cross because you had an end goal. May we see a better place. May we understand such things. They, they look like they are easy, but us understanding that we are exiles here would make it easy for us, that we're just passing through. This is not our final destination. Us building our houses or getting married or children or even having the cars or even is not our final destination. That is how the world sees it. Why he says, I have made it because he has gone for a holiday or because he has built a big house. That's not who we are. Us is that we're just passing through. May we not anchor on this world. May we anchor on you and fix our eyes on you. Because we're seated with you in the heavenly places. May we think about such things. You say that people who think about such things, people who say such things, are pleasing to you, and you're not ashamed to be called their God. Sometimes we think about how we can make it more comfortable for us here in the exile journey, how we make it very beautiful for us in the sojourning journey, in the pit stop, because we're just stopping here, we have a final destination, which is the, which is the kingdom, which is the city you're building for us, the new Jerusalem, that is not made by human hands, which is perfect. Help us think of these things, Sometimes we are so overwhelmed and we remove our eyes off you. We do not even think of such things. We're just thinking of the next project, of the next dime. Forgive us, O oh Lord, how we have removed our eyes off you and put them on the worldly things. Yes, we need to evangelize the world. Yes, we need to work out our salvation. We need to do things as we are here. That's why we are here. But may we never 
Fix her eyes on anything else but you. Fix her eyes on anything else but you. Help us, Holy Spirit. You the promise of you the promise that was before before any anyone was any of us was by Abraham. You who was that you would help us. You give us the strength to go through this journey. And you see the fruit of the Holy Spirit is faith, Father. It comes through your Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. Help us be faithful to you, regardless of what may be thrown away. May we not be attached to this world. May we be attached. No wonder the people of the, of the, of the, of, of the Old Testament are said to live in caves. Really, do you think they wouldn't have love to live in houses? But some lived in caves, some lived in holes. And sometimes we read these things and it's like, it's so abstract to us. We're like, what happened to these people? What is it that they did? But they, because of you, they decided they rather, they rather suffer the shame. They rather suffer not being in the best of places, but rather be shamed because of you, Christ, like Moses was, like Abraham was, like all the patriarchs of the Bible were, who didn't even see you, who don't even know you, who don't even have your Holy Spirit. How about us? What, what excuse would we give who have known you like never before? When you want to perfect us with them, with them who had even no word of God, it was you just talking to them and they believed you by your word. But we have the whole Bible to, to get all the promises that are due us, to stick on to you. Help us stick on to you. Fix our eyes on you and never to move them away. And never to move them away. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you because you're doing good. Help us. Help us think of these things as children. Let's help us mature. I know when we are young, we're thinking how you're going to bless us materialistically. But now you're telling us spiritually, where are our eyes fixed? Spiritually, what do we think of? Where is our passion? Where is our heart fixed? With you in the high places or here on the world? I thank you for your word. May you enlarge it. May you interpret it to your people, my God. I only did it as I... I as, as you've given me utterance, but I know there's much more to this. May this word bless your people all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Um, as, as, as we were sharing this word, and if you're there and you're like, oh, I don't even have this, this believing faith, because there's that first believing faith of believing Jesus as your personal savior. And you're like, I, no, I don't think I've ever done that. I just went to church. I just for some point myself following my friend, following my parents, following my sister, following, I just wanted the good music in church, but I have never put my faith in Jesus Christ. And you're there, you're like, I think my faith is on wrong things. Uh, you know, there's that song, on Christ our solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Yes, it may look like it's sturdy, you, the, the riches, you see all these rich people who don't know God and they look they are sturdy, but they are sinking sand. No wonder these people, these people of the old had a way of, 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 of singing these songs. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. If you've not yet put your faith in him, you're on sinking ground but if you want to be a person who's who gets to that destiny we were talking about the city not built by hands of men you have to first believe in jesus christ as your personal savior and lord and put your faith in him and fix your eyes from today henceforth on him you repeat these words with me i always tell people that um when we tell you to repeat these words it's not just just to make it as a game. You know, I, I, I give an example like people who go to, 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 to church to get married. I mean, it's just vows they make, words. But by the time they come out, a person called Alex is called Alex Sewava, who was Alex something else. I mean, she takes on another man's name, but just words. Over reception, where over there's no reception, somebody's name changes by just words they said. So words have power. Words have power. They have power to change even your name. So even now, when you say this word of prayer and you come and, and, and you know, pray this prayer with me of confession and believing in Christ, you may not see it. I mean, you might even come out and you come out of the reception and you're like, am I really Mrs. Namawa? 
what shows? And you, there's nothing that even shows, but you start living with this person as the wife, mm, and things change. Yes, they do. <laughs> you give birth to his children, iron his clothes, but by just what you said in church, I, Dorothy, marry you, you know, to be my wedded husband, that's all. Reception or no reception, it is bounding. So words are powerful. Be careful with your words. Sometimes you even make <laughs> vows with people. Uh, be careful with your words because they bind. But now that we are going to speak these words, believe them. Believe that they can change. F you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. And he rose again on the third day. I believe that his blood washes me clean from every sin I committed knowingly and unknowingly. And I believe when you say, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, I believe that as I've heard your word, I need you, you my redeemer, Jesus coming to my life. May your blood thoroughly wash me clean. And because of that, you say, I become a child of God. I confess that you are my Lord. I believe in my heart that you died and rose again. And you died for me. I'm one of those you came to die for. I do not see the blood, but I believe you died for me. I've seen it work for others. May it also work for me. Thank you for saving me and today help me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me fix my eyes on Jesus that I can make, well, that I may walk this faith walk with him. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I am now a child of God. Like I said, he may not feel anything. There are some people who really feel a change and you even see them crying. There are some who are like, I even don't know what happened. Why is anything changed? But the more you believe that you've started the walk of faith, the more you believe, the more you're going to see God change you. <laughs> These things are spiritual. Like we said, they are faith. We do not see them. We do not see how the heart works. Even you saying, coming to my heart, I do not know how, what heart you have, how it looks like, that kind of heart. But they are of faith. But now he said he puts on you the garment of righteousness. You are now in right standing with him by just saying those words and mainly believing on his word. God bless you. And I want to pray with everyone, anyone who's out there and you're going through difficult situations or anything like that. They still hope. God is still at work. <laughs> he who never slumbers and sleeps is still at work. He is still working. He is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to leave my brothers and sisters wherever they are watching me. And I come to you with different concerns, different, Lord Jesus, ailments, different issues, different things they are going through, especially in such times like this when we do not know what the future holds, but we know you who holds the future. We do not know how our economies are going to be when we are hearing recession coming here and there, but we know you who said, neither will I leave you nor forsake you. Never will I leave you nor forsake you. I'll look after you. You've always promised to give us our daily bread, to give us, Lord Jesus, provision. You tell us not to worry, that if you can look after them, the birds of the earth that do not sow. You, how much more will you look after us? You feed them. <laughs> you, broke, you came down to our level. That one of the basic things we need is feeding. You said if you can look after the birds of the air and you feed them, how much more as your children? If you can look after the lilies and you dress them up, that even Solomon in all his splendor could not dress up as one of them, how about us? Won't you dress us up? That even if we have the same dress like the children of Israel, they didn't wear, they didn't tear, you would dress us up and you will always be smart for you. Thank you, my God, because you've said you would look after us. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people to lift their faith even now for their situation if there's anyone sick I come in agreement with her and I tell that sickness to lose that body in the name of Jesus because you say by your promise that by your stripes we were healed by your stripes, we were made whole. Father, in the name of Jesus, may that body come to wholeness 
In the name of Jesus, I come against that mental disturbance, those, 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 those diseases of the mind, where the devil is trying to fight people, showing them this and this. May your word be true in them and cover their minds in the mighty name of Jesus. May the helmet of salvation be part of their Lord Jesus' garment of the soldier. You tell us in Ephesians 6 to put on the whole armor. May the helmet of salvation cover their minds against the wiles, against the schemes, against the whispers of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. And I render powerless every kind of every kind of Lord Jesus' father thought that is not of you. I render it captive and I place it under the feet of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Anyone who's going through any kind of of heartache, any kind of disease, any, any form of of, 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 of kind of place where they are that is not of you. I bring them out in the name of Jesus. Is it financial? Is it marital? Is it, is it relationships? Is it, is, is, does it have to do with, with our workspace? Anything that has to do with any place we are in that we are not supposed to be in. Father, I pray that your people come out in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. You say in Hosea that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And you said, because they denied knowledge, I'll also deny them. And you said, because they didn't want knowledge, I also won't take care of their children. Help us to learn to take, to, 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 to delve in you. Because in you is our remedy. In you is everything. You're the answer for the world today. You're the answer. I cannot mention every kind of issue going on, marital problems, Father, bring your children out, relationship problems between parents and children, between siblings, my God, between friends, Father, bring your people out, help your people to forgive, help us to forgive, help us to let go, because you say love doesn't keep a record of wrongs, help us to have a love that covers over a multitude of sins, that we may walk as children of the cross, as children fixing our eyes on you who forgave us and still is forgiving us. I thank you, Lord, because I know whoever is there and has been praying with me, you've answered their prayer. You've answered their prayer. I thank you, my Lord, and may we not stop praying here, but may we continue to pray every day because you say, won't you answer those, your, your chosen ones who call on you, who cry out to you that Jesus remember mercy day and night, day and night. How we sometimes go to other things, but when we have a mandate to call on you day and night, remind us to be prayer people. Remind us to be people of people who can intercede for our nations. Remind us to remember that we are not of this world. Yes, we might be in this world, but we are not of this world. We have a final destination, which is the city you've prepared for us. May, we, may you always put that in our minds. May we never forget it. I thank you, Lord. To you be glory and honor who sits on the throne. To you be glory and honor, wisdom, thanks, strength, power, blessings. Salvation belongs to you who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be blessing and glory and honor and wisdom and thanks and, 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 and strength and wealth. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for making us your children. And we will stand with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much um, for keeping on with me. I can't say thank you enough. I just ask one thing. And one, one thing and a favor of you. I'm not asking anything else. But one thing. Pray for us and share these messages. Is that something so hard? <laughs> just that. Nothing else. I know some people ask me of other things. Why don't you ask? No, I'm asking for one thing. Pray for us, me and my team. And if you have a prayer request, if you have a testimony, please don't hesitate to share. I have a prayer team with me. They are willing to stand with you in prayer. And I know you, there are some of you who are there who have been born again, you dedicated your lives. God bless you. Tell us what God has done in your life. It brings glory to God and it also encourages us, his servants. Because we want him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. God bless you. Until next time. Bye.